G'day, this is Captain Oob, and this is an ISO Hamlock. This is another COD ported weapon from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the new one, of course. And it's got an interesting name, because ISO Hamlock, it sounds like a name of a fantasy game NPC who's just given you a quest to clear out a cave full of goblins, but that's actually not what this thing is. It's some sort of Remington ACR knockoff looking thing. It looks just a little bit different enough to allow this thing to be used without a license in a Call of Duty game, but you can tell from the receiver here having that groove. I guess that's the um, ejection port on that side there. Looks like it's an ambidextrous ejection port, so that's helpful for that, and looks like the fire selecting is ambidextrous as well, as well as the mag release. So, you know, if you're left-handed or right-handed, you can use this thing comfortably, which is no bearing because all of your weapons are right-handed for... Fallout 4 mods, but, you know, it'll be a real groundbreaking one day if they put a weapon in your left-handed thing, because people go nuts, so the weapon's supposed to be on the right of the screen, and when it's not, everyone gets uncomfortable. Anyways, this thing's got custom sounds, really meaty, chunky sounds for a 5.56 shooting rifle. This thing can be chambered in 300 Blackout as well, with if, which, if you remember, are big, fat rounds made to be used for suppressed weapons, which have a little bit more power than 5.56s, but it's not actually reflected by the damage numbers here, if we go ahead and check that out. I'll, I'll get to that in a later, but basically the same damage we're getting out of this is what we'd get out of a vanilla game assault rifle with a suppressor and a powerful automatic receiver, which we'll chuck on right now. This thing cannot be made to be um, semi-auto, unfortunately, despite the firing selector would assume that you'd be able to do that, but... It's already stuck on full order. I guess it's jammed there. All of that 200-year-old irradiated dust would have got into the grooves or something. Legendary effect is there if you need it. We'll ignore that for now. And you can have a stock. All of these appear to be generic Call of Duty stock. That one looks like it's from a UMP-45. But I'm going to scroll down to this Raid 91. Something tells me this is the most effective at controlling rear cog because it's down the bottom. So I'll throw that on. And you'll find that there's basically the same sort of descriptions you'll find in Call of Duty, except for the standard one, which just says simply better recoil. You can have a barrel, you can make it long, you can also have the barrels with the integrated suppressors, which kind of look cool, but the one here that I'm going to choose is this Fiedler T50, which gives you 227 range, which is a lot better than what you can get out of a vanilla assault rifle, so that seems good. And we've gained a muzzle slot for our troubles there, which you can attach a suppressor if you want, giving us the 128 damage through the use of Ace Operator to max out our damage as it is there, 128. You can have something on the lower rail, including four grips, angled grips, vertical grips, and other grips. Grips out the wazoo. This one looks pretty comfortable. We'll throw that on. Just ignore the rate of fire boost. That's just a visual thing. Now, tactical, you can throw on a laser sight on the side in green, red, or even blue. There, there it is, the blue one. We don't see that every day, so I'm going to throw a blue one on there, and we'll move on. You can change the pistol grip to make it look slightly different. That one just looks like it'll just be uncomfortable if you're sitting there holding that for hours. That's how you get blisters on your pinky. That's not good. We'll go for the X10 grip for snappy target acquisition. I'm sure that has zero bearing on the weapon's performance, but it looks cool, right? That's what we're going with. And you can have some sights. Right now, the standard iron sights just to be uh, appear to be generic sort of flip-up iron sights so you'd get on your guns. And now they've got generically named Call of Duty sights, which are general mirrors of what you'd see in real life. This one right here, that's a EOTech 552 looking thing, but just shortened a little bit there. Smaller batteries, I suppose. And there's also some aim point ones with proper flip-up lenses too, so you can protect your lenses in the field of combat, and you don't want to get dust in those things, do you? And there's also some scopes too, which are all see-through, as far as I know. What we're going to do is, we'll chuck on a scope on this one. A 5 times optic, designed to be used at close to mid-range. That's pretty nice. And we've also got a damage slider here, which I'm tempted just to boost up a little bit to make this thing at least on par with the handmade rifle, but we'll leave this for now. And I think we've skipped over the magazines here. Yes, we have. So you can have a standard magazine or a 45 round magazine chambered in either 5.56 or 300 blackout, like I mentioned before. That actually doesn't change the chambering of the weapon, nor does it change the power of the weapon for its damage output, but it makes the magazine look different. So you pick whichever that you think looks better. That one. Sweet. Okay, there's our ISO hemlock. Let's clear out that 
a cave full of goblins now, I guess. You can craft this thing on a chemistry workbench pretty easily. You'll just require yourself a assault rifle, a vanilla game assault rifle to do that, as well as gun nut rank 2 and these components. I don't have any assault rifles on me right now, so I can't do it. Welcome back to the immersive Gunners Plaza. Whilst this thing has vanilla-like damage, I think we'll be okay with a suppressed automatic rifle for the most part. As long as we're sneaky, we'll get a whole lot of damage. Anyways, this here is the ISO Hemlock in first person. Aiming down the scopes. Yep, it's a see-through scope. Not really sure if this is a five times magnification. Maybe it is in Call of Duty and it's been sort of lost in translation for its transition over into Fallout. But I think this is a half decent zoom in for a scope like this which is fine it's got some sprinting animations which look like that and it's got some bashing animations which we'll use to uh put a fresh dent in this car's front guard here and whilst that thing catches on fire and explodes this is what this thing looks like in third person you can fire this thing like that it's got a reciprocating uh ejection port there probably following the bolt carrier right so that's how you release the uh hot casings from the weapon to reduce heat in the rifle itself which is pretty cool and this is the second one that i made this one without a suppressor with a big old muzzle brake on much louder on this approach and the reload seems to be slow for a call of duty reload i'll tell you that much feeling a little bit uncoordinated today maybe but yeah this one's loud and proud and i've also got a third one, which is going to be a little bit more compact, down to the foregrip, which is a lot smaller than the other foregrip that I had on my original rifle. Same animations, you'll hold it properly in first and third person alike, which is good attention to detail, and it's got a nice little open sight for those close quarter engagements. Now, here's what we want to do. We get as many sneak attack criticals as possible in the shortest amount of time as possible, and we've got a 45 round magazine, which is half decent for our purposes but really want to take out these bloody bugs first because they tend to run into the gunners and then cause stealth troubles for me let's leave the turrets for now we don't need to worry about them but getting 135 damage for a sneak critical is not too bad i gotta say though that the visual recall on this thing it's uh it's a bit you know it's like an earthquake every time we fire this weapon. There's no muzzle climb or anything at all. The weapon is going to stay on target, but uh, adjusting to this little bit of, a, I guess, <laughs> earthquake when we're firing, that might be a little bit hard to deal with. But for now, things are going pretty well. And if we can get those cheeky little headshots every now and then, um, we can actually deal a decent amount of damage. Now, although the paper damage on this thing's weapon card is about the same as you'd find a vanilla game assault rifle, the rate of fire is actually significantly slower, which means the DPS is going to be a lot less than what you'd find at a vanilla game assault rifle, which is potentially problematic for use in an end game over where we expect our weapons to be at least on par with a vanilla game assault rifle. That's a 45 round mag dump to get a kill. Granted, my accuracy could have been better, of course, but, you know, it's, um, we're going to take a little bit longer to release those 45 rounds than it would a vanilla assault rifle, so just keep that one in mind, I suppose. And just like any other sort of see-through scope that doesn't immediately transition you into first person when you um, aim down sights, of course, you'll get just a standard amount of zoom in here when you aim in third person like that. We'll pop a fresh mag in this one and immediately switch to something a little bit louder. Honestly, you could put these sounds on an M60 and I would say that that's an acceptable sound for it. It's a very meaty sound. It sounds a lot more powerful than what the damage numbers are telling me here. And I suppose I'll just stagger you into that car. That did barely anything. Gunner Command is there surprisingly resistant to car explosions in this game. Wow, that took a bit of killing to finally get rid of. I suppose we could just use VATS a little bit with this thing, increase our damage by guaranteeing those headshots, because it's not like this thing is inaccurate, and someone's staggering me really bad here. Not you, you've got a vanilla assault rifle. You've got... I'm not really sure what you've got. That's a vanilla assault rifle, so it's got to be you. We'll go for a critical here. It is unfortunate that we don't... Oh, that's a sort of... That's a Russian bullpup DMR type deal. That's cool. 
a little bit disappointed that we don't get a whole lot of VAT shots out of this thing either. So we can't really lock onto the head and get a whole lot of damage that way either. Reading a little bit of spread on this thing. Maybe just my sights and the earthquaking. Someone here has got some sort of staggering weapon and it's kicking my ass. You're almost dead, so I'll try to take you out. Ouch. Someone here has got an Arax and I know it. Not you, though. Maybe it's this guy. I'm just going to crit him with extreme prejudice. We might be able to pick this next one up with concentrated fire, maybe. Eh, wishful thinking. One thing I know is I should probably GTFO at the moment. Yes. Probably reset, maybe get myself nice and hidden again before we engage even more. We'll bring out our nice one, our little one here. We're in close quarters anyway, right? It makes sense. Plus, we get the ace operator bonus for the damage, and the recoil seems to be significantly lesser than the counterpart with the scope. Obviously, the, uh... Hello? That was interesting. I think I activated VATS right at the end of the reload animation. It sort of messed things up a little bit. I actually switched back to the loud and proud version here. Let me just uh, go back to this. So, utilizing the um, damage slider thing. It's not a thing that I usually do. I like to give them a fair chance of where the mod author intended them to go. But I gotta say, I have to recommend some sort of damage boost. Even if it's just the lowest one at 20%, I this thing is just not really cutting it. This is just bullet spongery at work. It's just standard Fallout 4 nonsense. There we go. There goes that guy. His gun spinning a billion times in the air as it goes along. Well, that's scary. I've got a lot of gunners to deal with here, and I had not a lot of time to do it in. They're putting the pressure on me and not liking these initial misses. We're, we seem to be getting a lot of misses with this thing. Just bad luck and RNG, I suppose, but... I think we're firing this thing a little bit out of range at the moment. And now they're throwing flashbangs at me. Luckily, we're built about as bullet spongy as they are. I'll tell you, if any one of these gunners had an MG42, like I used to have installed, I would have been shredded a very long time ago. Oh, the Rust Devils are showing up. Well, I'm not going to let look that gift horse in the mouth. We'll continue here. Probably not the best idea to give this only a 30 round magazine, considering that I don't even think we can get that. We can. Just. A couple of headshots get put us over the line there, but... Yeah. For an endgame solution, forget it. <laughs> Maybe if I wasn't fighting like a billion gunners, that'd be fine, but I'm, I sort of hold weapons like this to a pretty high standard. Perhaps thanks to um, Warfighter's Workshop, who always is fairly generous on the old uh, damage numbers there. Actually, these Rust Devils are destroying the gunners. Maybe it's the robots doing most of the hard work, but typically I don't rate them as that dangerous, to be honest. And I'm just switch over to this one now. That's much better accuracy. There we go. That's the stuff. That's what we want to see. Good old elevation bonus. Oh, that was so weird seeing bats in real time there. And I think that Assaultron is trying to bend that laser back to me. He gets killed with a lucky little proc from a... What's it called? Ricochet there. Alright. We're making it work for us here. A cheeky little level up here kind of saved my health bar, so I guess that's okay. And most of these raiders are not nearly as strong as what the gunners are, so... Maybe I should leave them alone for now. Some of these are equivalents to uh, the Raider veterans, though, which are pretty tough, but nowhere near on the level of these gunners. At least the hip fire is pretty nice. The uh, blue laser sight putting in good work, and I think tactical is down there. Thanks, mate. You're a ghoul, so you're going to die anyway. <laughs> Cheeky sneak crit. And I think the last people left are in here, so we'll quickly bust this open, give them a good old-fashioned door breach. I think we're still in caution, by the way. No, we're, we're in danger. They never quite forgot where I was. Unfortunately for them, they're all packing laser guns. So we've drawn very impotent weapons on their part. So that's probably helped me survive all this, but... 
At this stage, I feel like we've been fighting here for over 10 minutes. So, um... We did it, but we're not breaking any world record times for fastest killing of the immersive Gunners Plaza, that's for sure. You could say that it's balanced. I wouldn't mind a little bit more power behind it, especially since we've got to sacrifice a lot of our DPS due to this thing's much inferior substandard rate of fire. That better not be a flashbang. Okay, sweet, that wasn't. That's a frag grenade. That's a lethal grenade, which is uh, a lot less of a pain in the ass. Those ones don't disorient you. They might burn and hurt a little bit more, but at least you're not on the ground blind for two seconds. Fallout 4 is silly sometimes, but we made it. I suppose this weapon gets a pass, but I did feel like this thing was not hitting for as much as it ought to. But again, we've got the damage sliders for that, so it's fine. It's all good. I think we'll be fairly fortunate if we manage to stay out of detection for the duration of this fight. I feel like it might be possible. If we keep backing off, we've got a scope to help us zero into our target and nail those headshots from far ranges, but... The hipfire on this thing is so good that I probably don't even have to bother. Maybe if I wanted to get slightly more precise, I can get away with it. How are we going for health, by the way? He's actually out of bats range. I can't even see. That's slightly better, though. I'm seeing almost... I saw a couple of 400s there. That's pretty good. Let's get some bat shots here because I haven't used it that much yet. 660. There we go. So it's sort of coming into its own now that I'm using it as sort of a stealth base weapon, of course. Any sort of weapon worth its salt, automatic and such. I'd like to think that the bullets that I put into that helped it uh, really threw off the uh, trajectory of that rock that was thrown. If I can do this without getting a single hit from the old boy, then I'd be pretty happy. So we'll take cover behind this tree as he throws him in and may as well nail some quick, easy headshots. We'll throw the occasional critical in there. He's not seeming to be moving that fast at all. He's just sort of stuck there now. Bit of a stun mode, I think. <laughs> Don't give up, Swan. At least, at least give me a decent fight. There we go. One day I'll be playing one of these Souls games and I'll remember the time that I stood in front of trees and let Swan hit those instead. Okay. It's time to move on. I think I can stealth away from this a little bit. I've got Aqua Girl rank 2, so am I back in caution? I'm slipping out of... I am back in caution. Let me just get this reload happening fast. Oh, I'm going to have little nippers at my fucking... Oh, no. All the crabs are annoyed now. And whoop. Okay, I've been hit, but not by a swan. By a giant crab. That's fine. I can deal with those. Maybe they're a worthy diversion. Uh-uh. Get out of here. We're just wrecking these Myler catchlings. That's what you want to see out of a weapon like this. Also, it's past 6am now, so... I think we're still in daylight as far as the game's concerned because there's a big ball of hate in the sky shining light on me and still casting shadows, but... I wouldn't be surprised if I was just slightly better hidden in comparison. And luckily for us, that hammer is not going to get us down enough to finish the job. And in spectacular slow motion fashion, he glitchily falls down to the ground. Okay, we've done it. And I think that gives you an idea of what this thing can be pushed to, so... Now, if you're doing this, playing during the night, using this like a full stealthy loadout, I think you can do pretty well with it, but very hard difficulty, loud and proud against the gunners. A few, maybe, but a whole army of them, a whole company, a platoon of them. You're going to be shooting them for a while just to get the kill in, which feels like it does slow the weapon down a little bit and makes the time to kill a little bit of a... Uh, just a little bit too much, but... If you play on a lesser difficulty, or perhaps survival, of course, you probably find that is not really that much of a problem, but maybe a little bit more of a bigger problem for me because I like my time to kill us to be nice and snappy. But I think I can respect this weapon for what it does and the direction they've put it in. Plus, they made a really good job at animating this thing, at porting the COD assets into the game, and everything is done really well, so I can't fault it for anything like that. So I do recommend this downloaded um, if you want to see this 
that's a watch uh, thing. If I, if I was wearing the watch, you would have seen that the time is about half past seven, I'm guessing. Let's see if, how close I am. Adjusted for daylight savings time, I was spot on. <laughs> Anyways, so, yep, if you like to see this thing in your game, I highly recommend it. Check out the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I am out of here. Bye. See ya.